Hey everybody, this is Ben, and welcome to a brand new series here. This is going to be a series that we have randomly decided to call the Computer Craft Coders, and I am here joined by Sax Guy. Hey. And uh, he and I kind of uh, wanted to do something a little more complicated, and uh, I got to know him. He uh, doing some Computer Craft videos, and I started watching his stuff. Um, you, you can go ahead and check out his channel. He's uh, on YouTube. He is SaxGuy1999. Uh, he's done a couple of Computer Craft Challenge videos, very similar to what my own series was. Uh, but his channel is just starting out, so go ahead and you know give him some love over there. Uh, so anyway, uh, SaxGuy, why don't you tell him uh, kind of what our idea is for this series? All right. So what we're going to be doing is uh, just building really big, complicated programs, like our. We're actually going to be starting a bank with ATMs and master control centers and everything like that. So, and we will be based around this village. So, we are going to be basically just making big, complicated programs. Yep, exactly. So, our our first project we've chosen here is something that is somewhat going to be designed to possibly be used on like a multiplayer server. Um, this would be like a just a gigantic central storage system more or less a bank or a vault or something along those lines that players would be able to have an account and deposit items and the system would keep track of what those items were that each player had and so on um, players would possibly even be able to trade items through the system without having to withdraw them and hand them to another player um, the, so there will be a central system. So why don't we lay out real quick kind of like what the system needs. Um, so we are going to be needing a deposit. So like Well, I'm, set... I mean even more abstractly than that. Like first, we, we so we're going to have ATMs are kind of like where this all started. Yeah. Right? I mean, we wanted to have like some sort of, you know, just little deposit and withdrawal thing. So we need an ATM, so let's just... This is kind of going to be where our central site will go, but so we're going to need ATM, which will probably almost certainly be run by like a turtle, which will have I'm access to some advanced chests. Advanced turtle. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. I I didn't grab advanced ones. Why didn't I grab advanced ones? Are we going? Wait, is, are you doing advanced uh, wireless, right? Advanced wireless, yes. They gotta be wireless. There we go. All right, now I got those on my bar. Um, so yeah, turtle, run the ATM. Also gonna need turtles, you know, within the central system for anything, for any deposits and withdrawals. You need a turtle because you have to have something that can compare blocks. Yeah. Because of if they just throw in a grass block, and they can't just say that it's a iron piece of. Yeah, yeah. The system will because of the way computer craft works, and because we're trying to do this in just bare computer craft without any additional peripherals. Um, it, it is going to have to be primed with, you know, a large number of blocks, but I'm assuming that won't be a problem for something like a server owner who wants to uh, use this kind of system. Yes. So, I was actually, I had an idea, like, what if iron ingots are, like, a dollar, like, um, iron ingots can be, like, a dollar, gold, I mean, like, five dollars, and then it's it based around, like, a money system, basically. So, like, the more rare the item, the uh, higher it is. Yes, uh, something, I mean, I guess I wouldn't want to necessarily hard code that in because it's going to be entirely based upon what the users of a particular system happen to dig up. Yeah. If people are having a hard time finding diamond and we've artificially set the price, it's probably going to be set too low. Yeah. You know, to what its actual value is. So I think we should avoid trying to set any equivalencies between items. Um, so at the ATM. So then, other than an ATM, whoop, which you just destroyed. <laughs> Did. Oh, sorry. Um, we sorry, will program. need we'll need a central server that will coordinate any deposits and withdrawals, which I am representing here and forgetting to add a wireless modem. I don't like that the wireless modems are still gray. Yeah, that's what I was actually just looking at. That. They, they need to make a, a advanced wireless modem. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the range could be doubled or something. Alright, so we've got ATM, we've got central server, 
and then in the central server, this thing is going to be coordinating all of the deposit withdrawal requests, and as well as other requests. So I'm thinking that we don't want to be coding too much into this thing beyond what we absolutely have to. Yes. Um, so my thought is that we should have a separate uh, database server, which will actually be storing what the actual you know deposits of each person are. What I, all the persons have. This is where actually like all of the records would actually be stored. The central oh, server would just be sending requests saying, "Does this person have this? Yes. Okay, send it to him. You know, subtract that, withdraw that so much, whatever." So we're basically just saying, we're just putting like little things out saying, so this right here would be, and the, this would be probably like the computer that the uh, user uses to, lo to log into their account. Yeah, uh, well, not, not directly. <laughs> um, so hold on, this is uh, central server, there we go. This one will say database server. I, I try like to try. I mean, this is this is essentially like the same sort of way I'm dividing up my automatic turtle control system. I like to have all of my code kind of broken up into separate places. So we've got database, we've got central server, and the central server, like when you're in the bank, we're still gonna need you know, like turtles for deposit and withdrawal, but they're not exactly an ATM because they won't be remote to the central location. Yeah. So okay, so we have a we have a good idea of what this is going to be. Well there's one other piece well actually two other pieces depending on how complicated you want to get. <laughs> okay. I did a lot of thinking about how to divide this up. Now, one of the things we have here is the ATM is going to be physically removed from the central vault. Yes. So the ATM is probably not going to have that big of a stock of the items that are actually going to be stored in the system. So if several people are trying to withdraw from an ATM, it will not necessarily have not enough materials. The material. And so, we, so, we want it yeah. to get the material somehow. You want it to, all right. So the ATM will be the turtle. Would you want the turtle to, um, like, go underground or something like that and go to the central vault or go to like the vault or whatever to get the stuff? Um, basically, yes. That is that is like exactly what I want. Except that we can't really have the turtle that's running the ATM leave because then that's an actual part of that system that is going to, you know, vanish from time to well, time. Well then, I have a good idea. We could always do a, um, if we have a turtle behind it. Well, uh, yeah, you're, you're hitting on pretty much what my idea is at any rate. That we're going to need transport turtles. Yes, yeah, that's, what, that's what I was actually going at. Like, so the and then we have like a basically a structure around the ATM TM. So this right here, it detects when this turtle gets low or whatever on um, items, or when this turtle gets low, it sends this turtle a message through RedNet saying, "Go get me more items." Basically. Um. Yeah. That, that's. I, I have to say again, that's that's very similar. But the thing is that if I mean the turtle, we don't want it to start at the ATM. We want it to start at the central location, because if it's at the ATM, that's doubling the amount of time it's going to take. It's going to have yeah, to go yeah. back and then come out again. We want it to stick around the uh, the vault. All right, so that's that sounds that sounds right. So basically, we have like the central vault over here. So say this is central vault, and we have our turtle when this when this one right here runs out of items it sends a message this one saying well, bring me some items I don't then... it shouldn't be directly communicating with a particular turtle it should all the, the all the communication connections I how do I represent this let's see broadcast here. not even a broadcast I think what we want to here this is just to represent connection <laughs> 
So that's connected to the central server. Central server connects to the database server. Oop. And then obviously central server is connected to those guys. So the central server would send a some kind of signal to a turtle that is waiting. We've almost got enough steps. If we're going to have a system that can handle multiple ATMs, you're going to have to have, be able to manage at least one and possibly more transport turtles per ATM, depending entirely on how busy it is. So my thinking is we throw in another server, which is the transport turtle management server. So yeah. That's so not, the that's central great. server would send a request to this server saying, I need these materials in this location. Yeah, and then any turtles that are idle. Yes, exactly. Will, if there's a turtle that's idle, it will take that command and go. But we also have to think, what if there's more than one turtle idle? What if there's two turtles idle? Oh is yeah. It gonna, if it, is it going to get both send both of those turtles, or how are we going to make it so it only sends one? That's well, it sh it shouldn't be hard to have it only send one because it'll send a request. I mean, it this server will pretty much be storing a list of all turtles that are assigned to transport duty, so it will just pick an idle one out of the list it has. Okay. Yeah. And then it will only communicate with that turtle. Okay. That sounds. That sounds um. You, you could go a little bit further, like, I have had thoughts that, like, having everything in a central location works fine as long as you're covering an area, say, about the size of this village. That's not too big. I mean, we're more or less somewhat centrally located. Um, are we going to have to extend a... extend some kind of connection from the turtle to the central server because of is that going to say we have the bank on one side of the city and then on the other side of the city we have an ATM yeah we're going we're going to have to extend it somehow by putting in a server extender uh very very likely yes that uh routers which I'll just go like that will be part of the system as well yes that's all awesome. that um and I've I've written that kind of thing and I mean, we could even just use the exact same code I have for relay. I mean, it's relay. Oh, no modem. <laughs> but I have the program on here. <laughs> it was my point. There we go. There we go. Relays. I, I copied all of my my code over. Is on this. This is on the same system as my computer craft challenge. So I brought over my my code from that stuff. Um. So at any rate. That is more or less the basics of what we need for the system. The, the only thing that is left is that, whoa, ROM. Yeah, I was just looking at that for a second. <laughs> um, ROM is, a, is too big a folder for browsing in-game, in my opinion, but. Um, we, we could always make a, uh, make directories for each of these. Like specific directories. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably package this system. I mean, once it's working, more or less package it up into a folder of some sort. Um, so, uh, then we have turtles transporting from the vault to the ATM. There's one other piece that, in my mind, I had to make this whole thing run smoothly, and that is a system to manage the inventory of the vault because we have to physically manage all the materials that come in and that's going to be that's going to be a, a task i i can i'll say <laughs> like, so because like, of the way of the requirement and how you compare materials in computer craft so like the turtles um have to basically organize the Organize, and they have to tell what materials what. So if it's like a iron ingot, then they have to recognize it's an iron ingot to put it in the same chest as all yep. the other ones. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and also, I mean, 
that's storage, but then also retrieval. They have to figure out, like, okay, where are the ingots? Where are the iron ingots? Someone wants an iron ingot, and you have to be able to get these transport turtles that particular material. And we also have to make sure these turtles always have fuel on. Yes, fuel, fuel will have to be provided. That's, I'm, I'm thinking that if there's anything, any going to be any kind of configurable fee for storing your materials, it would be payable in coal only. <laughs> yeah, so we have turtles that will actually run, not stop halfway there. And you're waiting the whole time, where's my turtles? My money. My money. Yep. Yeah, right. These villagers are filthy rich. Alright, so that means we need the last server. A vault management server. Oh, I lost my modem. Give me a modem from somebody. Now, would that connect to the central server? All the way over here? The vault management, um... Or would it be connected to the database, because if we have a central server... Um, pretty much only the central server would be connected to the database server. Okay. I think. And so, cause that's basically just going to be saying... People have, you know... You know, Ben has six ingots, he cannot withdraw eight. Or, you know, Ben has ten ingots, subtract eight and get, you know... From that amount, and then the server will carry on saying yes, he can withdraw eight ingots, and they'll send a message to the to the uh, vault management, vault management, management server, saying to uh, get those ready, and then that would be let's see. So then the vault management server would pull out the requested materials. And it would have to put them in like a standby chest or something like that. For the turtles to grab. Then the once that's done, it would send a message to the central server saying, "Hey, the materials are ready at this location." Then the central server would send a message to transport control server, saying, "Send a turtle to this location to pick up materials and deliver them to whatever location, which would be so, either, you know, a withdrawal station in the bank or an ATM or whatever." So we basically have a turtle working for the central vault just to get everything ready, and then we have uh, yes. a chest. We have a chest to set aside, so this turtle will put everything that it got from the other chest with all the materials into this chest, set the signal for this one, to come and get the stuff out of the chest. Basically, simplified. Oh, a fuel. Of course you are. Yeah, I thought so. Redstone blocks these guys, unfortunately. <laughs> but whatever, we won't need much redstone at all. Yeah, we we really won't. So, but yes, that is essentially it. I mean, it's going to be a series, it's going to be a request to the central server, and the central server is going to do a series of handoffs to the database server first, then to the vault control, vault management, and then once that's complete, then over to the transport, and then that will be transported out to whatever location. And then I am not entirely certain on the details of how it's going to tell whatever the with the you know interface point that the material is there because I can't just spit them out really I mean we're talking a potentially long wait you know for, for an average person this is gonna be a potentially rather long wait to withdraw something especially if it's in any quantity yeah yeah, it's, it's probably going, because this turtle has to get everything ready before it sends a message to this turtle. And then when this turtle gets the message, it has to go get the stuff. So it's going to be a pretty lengthy, lengthy process. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's going to be complex, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, it, that's what this that's what this series is for. I'm, probably, I'm pretty sure some of the viewers' heads are spinning. <laughs> Perhaps. But that's actually taken up pretty much the entire amount of time for our first episode. So, thanks everybody for watching. And thank you for joining me here, Sax Guy. I hope we're going to be able to accomplish what our super complicated idea is. Very complicated idea is. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.